Hope you got a nice cup of tea, because I do. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome back. It's your boy, Classic Tony. I wanted to start this episode by apologizing. I think I cursed a lot in the last... last I'm going to try that again. I, <laughs> I want to apologize. I think I cursed a lot in the last episode. I think Kerr just really gets under my skin because of how shady he is and how grimy he is towards the end. But, you know, I, I feel like cursing like the way this game curses right like is perfect when it's appropriate it's okay it's okay when it's descriptive or storytelling kind of like to drive home a point that's fine but it shouldn't be all the time and i felt like i was kind of a little little casual with the curse words last episode so this episode none zero not gonna happen unless it's in the script <laughs> so yeah if you don't remember last episode we followed the path where we ended up at the source the source and we learned the source is this weird frozen hole, and we didn't know how to, we were going to either steal it or destroy it with Iggy, and we didn't know. We didn't know how to do that. So Iggy, we had two options where Iggy and Kerr fell into the, fell on the edge of the hole and we were holding them up. We either had to drop them, both, causing them both to perish. Whew, poor little Iggy. Screw you, Kerr. <laughs> or we had to refused and save them both ultimately leading to us being captured Iggy and Luca being captured and the whole thing being just ended so we did both paths and now we have to go and figure out what else is going on but we saw as you can see when we go back to the path where we meet our friend Beck we can now see that the storm will no longer rumble it will break and we will not have clouds and this is for anybody who's kind of joining them maybe a little late, this is the path where we ran into Beck on the street. She asked us what her favorite pizza was, and then we went back to dinner with her parents, both her moms. And so we had dinner with her moms. Things got a little uncomfortable. And as we were about, we were going to go home, but some clouds rolled in. So now we're outside of Beck's house. Beck is waiting for us, or excuse me, Beck is waiting with us to leave. So let's... Get right into it and see what happens if the storm doesn't rumble. If it does, in fact, those clouds do break. So let's let's try it out. Luca began to respond, but the sky answered for him as the clouds above began to break. Luca began to respond, but the sky answered for him as the clouds above began to break, revealing patches of star-filled summer night. Moonlight filtered down, shimmering in the treetops. Couldn't ruin that for you. Beautifully, beautifully narrated story and some wonderfully descriptive words. Here, uh, ASMR moment for all of my A all you ASMRers out there. Hope hope you enjoy. Ah, I. <laughs> I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I do not get ASMR. I don't get the tinglies, but I can respect it. I can respect it. I'm just going to take a quick second to say, there are YouTubers, there are people who I listen to that I don't, I don't, not that I don't care, not that I don't care, I don't care what they have to say. <laughs> not that I don't care what they're doing, but the sound of their voice is just pleasant. Like, they just have a nice speaking voice, and so I just am fond of listening to some YouTubers. Specifically, I think of Astral Spiff because, okay, so I I found him, uh, <laughs> side story. Shout outs to Astral Spiff, he's a great YouTuber. And I found him um, because I was looking for somebody who played Sea of Thieves and he played Sea of Thieves. Then he had a couple of Sea of Thieves videos and he was really fun, laid back. Then he started playing some horror, he was speed running horror games, which I thought was really cool because I've never been a huge fan of horror games, but I love speed running. Then, he played Security Breach, which Security Breach, when it released, was a broken, buggy mess. And I loved it. I loved that it was a broken, buggy mess. And people were, like, hating on it because it was this glitchy thing. And I was like, no, this is hilarious. And so I wanted to see somebody's, like, joy with a buggy game, I guess. And he had that, like, perfect energy. And so even now, like, he'll play some, like, Spiff will play, like, various games that are like horror games that i'm not a huge fan of some that are like really scary and i'll be like nope nope not watching this nope but i'll leave it on in the background and he'll just be like chatting and there'll be just be like some background game noise and it's like pleasant it's really nice like for a just a kind of a podcast listening kind of thing <laughs> i don't know 
I'm, I'm a total wuss, wuss when it comes to horror games, but anyway, shouting out bigger channels than me just because I love them. <laughs> Sure, you can meet Rolo. You're not going home? No, I promised Rolo I'd tell him about- Lucas stopped himself mid-sentence. Promised you'd tell him what? Spit it out, bub. We're thick as thieves now. If there's a juicy secret, you've got to tell me. Okay. You can come to the treehouse, and I'll tell you both what happened. Heck yeah. Alright, let's go. Luca saw Beck skulking by the gate. What's she skulking about? So, you're telling me there's nothing mysterious or creepy about this place? It's mostly boring and empty. I refuse to believe that. Big spiked gate. Looming mansion. Rich, reclusive owners? It even smells shady. <laughs> I love Beck. She's so great. It even smells shady. Beck grabbed the wrought iron bars and shook the gate. <laughs> <laughs> Let me in! <laughs> Let me in! <laughs> Mark my words, you decadent nightmare house. You will reveal your secrets to me. What did you do? First of all, I told you so. Second, hide. That's Ernest Valentine. Who's that she's talking to? I'm trying so hard not to make Beck like this, like, you know, like really annoying, like talk through the nose, but I'm trying to also keep Back, I didn't give back a different voice at all. <laughs> so we'll, we'll just... Who's that she's talking to? There it is. Shh. I expected you to return the suit in working order. Of course. As long as everything proceeds as planned. Now, just to be clear, anybody could be in this suit. I just give these suit guys this voice. Just keep them just, just, just man. anybody. It's just a suited character. It doesn't mean they're all the same suited character. Just throwing that out there. I don't know. Why is the suit guy here and not in the ice place? What the fuck is going on? Oh. Okay. Okay. You know what? You know what? You know what? You know what? I'm I'm sorry. That one just kind of slipped out. That was an accident. And put a put a jar a dollar a jar in the dollar. I'm, I'm gonna put a dollar or. Oh my god, I'm going to put a jar in the dollar swear cup. Yep, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a jar in the swear dollar. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Gosh darn it. <laughs> nah, it's all good. We're just having fun here. There's nothing to worry about. The only thing I'm worried about is what's rightfully mine. If that means making some unsavory alliances, so be it. I couldn't agree more. There comes a time to suspend hostilities. I'll deal with our common threat. Oh yeah, now I gotta whisper. Now this is what I'm talking about. Beck's voice was an excited whisper. Proper shady stuff. Someone in a suit like that tried to grab me yesterday. Seriously? Shh. You do understand that when this all inevitably fails, I will deny everything. I wouldn't expect any less of you. You just worry about your part in this and let me handle the rest. I can't wait to see the look on that rude cur's face. Yes, the truth will come to light. I'm still surprised you're so comfortable with the potential collateral damage. If there's one thing I've learned, it's that change is painful. I was expecting Shady, but that's just flat out supervillain talk. If you don't mind me asking, why? Why are you doing all of the this? The mysterious figure retracted their mask, hair pushing out from all corners. 
<gasps> Hello, dearie. It's your old sweet gran. I'm doing this for family. A chill ran down Lucas' spine. His vision blurred. Beck stifled a sharp wince, and Luca looked down to see himself wrenching her hand. An answer I can certainly respect. Gran tussled her hair back under the face mask. Just, 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 I'm trying to do the two voices together. Just remember. <laughs> I think I'm just going to, just remember. Just remember, keep everything nice and normal until the festival. Boy, I don't need lessons in rousing suspicion. Gran gave Eris a curt nod and disappeared into the night. What the heck? <laughs> what just happened? Why is this going on? Chapter 5 What big ears you have. Mm. <laughs> Lucas sat shivering in the bushes, staring at his feet. Understandably so. I mean, he's been grabbed, trapped, and then on the other storyline, captured by these guys like now it's it's been grand what the fuck after checking to make sure the coast was clear beck gave him a gentle tug on his sweater what's wrong you look like you've seen a ghost why were you so scared of that old lady in the hazmat suit? That was my gran. That was your gran? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm sure there's a perfectly reasonable explanation for all of this. Let's just get to the treehouse and figure things out there. Oh, I smacked my mic. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Let's just get to the treehouse and figure things out there. Lead the way. Let's go meet Rolo. Oh, man. For the last time, there's nothing to worry about. Of course, we're not worried. The clipboard finished writing with a scratchy flourish and looked up. Dotting our I's and crossing our D's. Well, maybe try minding your P's and Q's. Mr. Nuncreed, arms crossed over his paunch, gave an exhausted sigh. <clears throat> if there's anything you need knowing, you'll know it. Absolutely. If you'll just sign here, acknowledging everything is accurate. We'll be out of your hair in a flash. Oh, for the love of... He snatched the pad and scribbled his name so hard the pen nearly snapped. There. And would you like me to... We're completely fine. Would you like my eternal soul as well? The clipboards looked at each other for a moment, almost pondering the possibility. Then broke into laughter as they walked away. <laughs> Weirdos. Hi, Mr. Duncreed. Luca, let me give you some advice. The next time someone you don't know asks to hear your thoughts, give him a good old bop right in the kisser. Oh, Gran tells me to just keep away from the clipboards. That's good, that's good. Your Gran is a smart lady, Luca. Speaking of which, you'd better run along home now. Too dark to be wandering on your own. Just because I know everybody's going to be like, what's going on? It's just nobody's around. So as you can see. 
<laughs> I'd better not dilly dally. Gotta get to the treehouse. Okay, so we can't go down the other paths, but we can talk to people. The answers you seek will be revealed to you in due time. The, the question is, the figure intoned. Are you prepared to live with the truth? Mm. Another day, another dollar. See you tomorrow, Z. Have you noticed how all the perennial harvest folks order the same drink? Decaf cappuccino with extra foam. Why? I don't know. Just thought it's a little odd. Pretty weird, for sure. Well, the customer's always right. See you bright and early tomorrow. Oh, I can't wait. But you know we have to go this way and see. <gasps> She's not there. It's okay. It's okay. Oh, diner's locked. So let's just head where we're supposed to. Oh, we got Mr. Kerr and Mr. Mayor. Let's see what's going on Lillian here. Lillian Kerr and Gus Valentine proudly surveyed the half-covered festival banner. It's all coming together quite nicely. Yes, I think... I know the two sound very similar. <laughs> I give tired old men the same voice. Yes, it's okay. It's all coming together quite nicely. Yes, Yugi boy. <laughs> Going between these two voices just makes me laugh. <laughs> oh, the difference is hilarious. Oh, yes, Yugi boy. Couldn't have done it without you. The mayor gave a half-hearted shrug. I'm not sure about that. Nonsense. That reminds me, I wasn't able to thank your sister for her contributions. Yes, she's been... Indisposed of late. She doesn't much like me, does she? Oh no, that's not it at all. She's just been busy. Of course. Regardless, I would be forever grateful if you could pass my thanks on to her. The History Museum has a real air of import to our whole affair. And we can't very... <laughs> <coughs> oh god <laughs> oh god self-compromise vocals down ah <laughs> self-compromising saliva ah oh god <clears throat> try that again and we couldn't very well celebrate the story of beacon pines without including the valentines <sighs> my father was a great man your darn tootin' he was. Kerr locked his arm on Gus's shoulder. Uh, but I mean the entire Valentine family. Perez and company included. Can I ask you something, Kerr? Call me William. Ask away. William, why are you doing all of this? Gosh, I've never felt one... Try that again. Gosh, I've never felt one need to com compliment. Blah, 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 blah. Gosh, I've never felt one need to. Oh. Sorry. I'm putting another jar in the tip dollar. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, this line is hard because of the voice. I apologize. <laughs> Hopefully it's not too bad. Uh, you're never going to hear any of this except that I'm going to embarrass myself right there with the dollar, with the jar and the tip dollar. So I apologize. Gosh. I've never felt one needed a compelling reason to throw a party. <clears throat> Not just the festival. All of this. There's gotta be a hundred down-on-their-luck towns out there. Why is Perennial Harvest so interested in helping Beacon Pines? You know what I love most about the agricultural business? Seeds. Seeds? Yup, little bundles of potential. With a glimmer in his eye, Kurt gestured grandly toward the horizon. 
You treat a seed right, nature it, feed it, and it can grow into something truly special. You see potential here? Undubitably. The seed of greatness is already under our feet. All it needs is a little nudge. And the right leadership, of course. Oh. Good night, Mayor Valentine. Off he goes. Little jerk. And... Nope, we can't talk to him, so... Let's head to the treehouse. Oh. I thought Beck was about to run into the lake. The the running animation, I don't know if you could see that on OBS, but the running animation like continued very slightly over the water. I thought it just broke for a minute and she was going to be standing on water. <laughs> it's like, Beck, no, don't. You're going to get wet. Cats don't like water. <laughs> oh. Beck reminds me of my cat a little bit too. Cause she has the green eye. It's it's she's a black cat with the green eyes. Uh, I have a cat. Uh, my got the cat. My mom named the cat. I want it. Okay, so I have an all black cat. Don't black cats are beautiful. Anyway, I, I, uh, let me rephrase. I think all animals are cute. I think black cats are like elegant. Like she is an elegant shiny cat. She has beautiful fur. She's a very sweet cat. Anyway, Beck reminds me of my cat. Because of the green eyes and the all black cat with green eyes. I just, like, my cat Luna looks like that. And I didn't want to name my cat fucking Luna. When we got her, I was living with my folks, my parents. And I kind of wanted to name this cat something different. Something, you know, unique. An anime kind of name. I love Bleach. And I wanted to name her Yorochi. I thought that was a great name. And so I threw out Yorochi. And my mom was like, no, that's too long. You can't name a cat something like that. And I was like, but it's so perfect. Like, if you knew the reference, you would be like, oh, that's perfect. But nope, not going to happen. Anyway, so instead of Yorochi, I said, well, what about Mew? Like the Pokemon, Mew. Not that Mew is pink or anything. Like, not that Mew is a black cat, but like Mew is like kind of like a cat. So I like that name too. So I was like, what about Mew? And she was like, mm, no, it's too close to like meow. Like it sounds like blah, blah, blah. And so I was like, oh, fine. And so I said, Luma, Ma, Luma. If you played Super Mario Galaxy, you know, Rosalina and Luma. So I said Luma. And I don't know if I just didn't say it clear enough or I didn't articulate well enough, but nope. My mom went, oh, Luna, I love that. And so the legend was, and so the fate of my cat's destiny was sealed into being named the most basic cat name. Dang it, I'm not supposed to be cursing. I'm sorry. I will put another jar in the swear dollar. I apologize. And so the fate was sealed for my cat to have a basic cat name forever. I think Luna was like the number one cat name of 2022 or something, 2023 or something. Like Luna was like the number one pet name. And I was just like, gosh, darn it. Like, I didn't even want her to have this name, <laughs> but she likes it. And she's, you know, she's definitely a night owl. So it's, it's, it's very fitting. So. And she's, she, if you, if you know Sailor Moon, that's why I don't mind the name Luna because it fits with Sailor Moon. At least I watched Sailor Moon a little bit growing up. If you know Sailor Moon and you know Luna, you know she's like, remember some, you know that she's like a brat. Like, she's like a mom of the group. Like, she's very like, no, do this, do this. You got to do this. You got to save the world and bullshit like that. Not only, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> and, and I feel like she's very, um, like, the character's personality is very much like my cat's personality because my cat's very snooty and like, ooh, you can't pet me right now. Like, why are you touching me? Okay, now you can touch me. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, just nerding out about my cat. She's a good girl. She's a great cat. I love her. Uh, if she didn't respond to her name, like, semi-decently, like, she responds to ps, 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 but more than she does her name, but at least if I say Luna while she's, like, laying down, she looks up at me, so I just, I just keep the name. I think sometimes when I'm alone, I just, like, every so often I'll slip, I'll slip a Luma in there, and it's like, oh, yeah, she looked at me. Okay, I can, I can, I can sneak a couple of those in there. <laughs> anyway, let's get into it. Let's get back into it. Oh, this is nice. Yeah, the treehouse is just a little further on from here. So, what's your buddy Rolo like? Rolo? He's Rolo. Not particularly helpful? 
Sorry, I've just never thought about it. Lots of energy. He's funny, even when he's not trying to be. Things have been tough for his family since the foul harvest. It's about damn time you tell me what this foul harvest thingy is. It's a kind of long story. Hit me with the highlights. <laughs> Just so you're aware, I think this is why I refer to clips as highlights is because of this line right here. It's hit me with the highlights. I just love that. Mm. Shout out Spark Notes. <laughs> I don't know. Now with ChatGPT, do kids even need Spark Notes? They just hit up ChatGPT to tell them, like, give me the key plot points from books, right? Like, you guys don't even. <laughs> Another dollar in the jar, I swear. To... Another jar goes into the swear dollar. I'm sorry. But with ChatGPT, y'all don't even, excuse me, when I was in school, we used to use Spark Notes and, you know, teachers would get furious with us because, you know, like, oh, you're not reading the book. And it's like, I would tell my teachers, I have reading comprehension issues. If I don't understand the plot points of the book, what good is it for me to read the book? If I don't understand what I'm reading or I can't make perfect comprehension of what I'm reading, I should seek out Spark Notes, right? Like, so I understand the themes and the stories. I always felt like teachers shamed me for trying to understand things better because I couldn't, because I would do, they would think like, oh, you didn't do the reading. That's why you're, you're looking at the spark notes. It's like, no, I need something to help me like understand all of this information that my dyslexic ass brain <laughs> couldn't process. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. I, oh, I was good in school, but I was never a fan of school. I just, as I got older, I really disagreed with how, like I, I went to a great school. I went to like a, a really well-rounded high school that had a lot of opportunities and a lot of different avenues for learning. And that's what I liked a lot. But as far as like how some of my teachers taught, I can look back and tell you I had mostly good teachers, but the handful of bad teachers I had, oh boy, howdy, were they bad and were they memorable? <laughs> yeah, they were terrible. <laughs> I had this one uh, history teacher who was just awful. Like I would, I would read the book, like she would give us a book and I would read the lesson and then I would come in the next day and I would, you know, basically just say like, oh, like. I would ask like a few questions about the chapter. Like I would be like, oh, what about this? What about this? Because I would just wanted to make sure I had a good understanding. And at one point, I remember she said something to me like, like, why don't you just do the readings instead of asking me all these questions when you walk in, like just do the readings. And I'm like, excuse me. And she's like, I know the reason you're asking me these questions is because you didn't do the reading. And I said, what are you talking about? And she like insulted, like rudely was like, you know, why would you need to ask so many questions if you actually read it? And I was just like, because I didn't understand the reading. Like, I want to make sure I'm getting them. So I just, from that moment on, I just was like, nah, I don't care about this history class. And I love, I love, like, I love history. Let's just put it this way. From that moment on, I did, I was an average student. I was, a, I was a CD student in that class. I did not give any extra effort. I didn't answer no questions. I didn't do nothing because I felt like that teacher was just so rude to me. I was like, I'm just trying to learn. And here you are being like, you know, you didn't do any reading. And I was, and I, and I didn't say this. I just walked away because I was in such shock that a teacher would say that to a student. But at the time, I really should have said to that teacher, I'm trying, I don't, I almost said their name. I don't, <laughs> I don't want to say their name, but I should have said to that teacher, you know, how would I have these questions? How would I have formed these questions for you without reading the chapter? Because the questions I was asking her were specifically to the chapter. So it's like, how are you going to tell me I didn't do the readings when I'm literally sitting there telling you questions for the chapter? I'm getting off topic. I just got heated. Sorry about that. Screw you. You know who you are. <laughs> Screw you, my, uh, I think it was like 10th grade history teacher. You were, you were a jerk to me. You were not nice. And I didn't like your class because of that. I love history though. Not you. I liked history. History in college was way better because I learned world history and world history is a lot of fun. Anyway, getting, getting off topic, getting back to the, <laughs> ah, no, <laughs> another jar goes into the swear dollar. Oh my God. I'm so terrible. I'm so terrible. I said I wasn't going to do any of that today, and I'm just dropping them. Like I think that's five now. Oh man, I'm 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 a big old blob of flubber today. That's for sure. <laughs> that's what my that's what I call my 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 grandma used to say whenever you would like flub words, like you would curse or slip little bad words in there. She'd say your mouth is like flubber, and so that's where that comes from. If you don't know what flubber is, just go look up the movie, but that's what your mouth is doing. You're not paying attention to what your mouth is doing. You're letting it run wild. You can't, you can't let your mouth be like flubber. <laughs> 
So let's get back into this beautiful little story. Yeah, I've been off on a side tangent for too long. Hit me with the highlights. Okay. There used to be a fertilizer company here called Valentine's. They were kind of a big deal. Oh, big deal fertilizer? It was a big deal to us. Their stuff really worked. Farmers loved it. So Valentine's grew and grew. Beacon Pines pretty much grew around it. Most everyone in town either worked for Shepherd Valentine or used his fertilizer. Things were good. I'm seeing a big butt. Incoming. <laughs> oh, I'm sensing, not seeing. Sorry, gotta read. I'm sensing a big butt. Around six years ago, Shepherd Valentine suddenly died. And something changed. Changed how? Could have been a bad batch? Could have been a bad batch of brownies. <laughs> Could have been a bad batch? Maybe it was in the water, or air, or soil? Nobody knows. But all the crops died. And everyone blamed the Valentines. The foul harvest. Yeah. Valentine's fertilizer went out of business. Half the town lost their jobs. She Sheesh! <laughs> she <laughs> Sheesh. The next year, the crops came back, but something was different. You plant a crop, do everything right, and it's sort of a crapshoot what happens. And no one knows why? Nope. I take it Rolo's farm got the short end of the stick. Yup, for some reason, their farm was hit harder than others. That sucks. Things have gotten better since Perennial Harvest came to town. The Beacon Pines Were Born initiative. Yup, first thing they did was give the town a deep scrub. They even put us up in hotels, one town over for a week, while they decontaminated the groundwater. Hmm. Hmm, indeed, Beck. Hmm, indeed. We'd better get going. We're late. Let's hope he's not mad. It's about time. I was about to give up and go home. Who's the new kid? Name's Beck. You must be Rolo. I see my reputation proceeds me. Welcome to Mission Control. Rolo waggled his head with pride. <laughs> As he should. You'll find we've spared no expense in construction. I've seen worse looking piles of junk. Thank you. Or, thanks. Hey Luca, you know those security concerns we talked about? Yeah. While I was waiting, I made some... improvements. Let me lock this baby down for a little test infiltration. Can't be so t blah, blah, blah. I can't can't read that line. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I'm gonna pause really quick. Hold on. Nice one. Can't be too safe these days. He goes all out, doesn't he? Always. <laughs> Little lavish.
Where did you guys get all this junk in the first place? There's a guy in- D Patches, stop biting my kneecap. <laughs> There's a guy in town named Jeff. He trades us junk for snacks. Junk food for junk. Nice. So? No, indeed. Oh, no. Oh, I'm so sorry, everybody. You didn't hear any of that. That probably sounds terrible. My microphone wasn't plugged in. Oh, good lord. I'll tell you what, if it's really bad, I'm gonna go back and I'll record over what's there and you won't even hear a difference. But if it's, if it's salvageable, I'll leave it in and you can all laugh at me at this point. So I apologize. I, apo I apologize. I'm very sorry. That was completely uncalled. I, I just didn't. I unplugged my microphone to check my uh, notes. I have a, a little like video that has everybody's voice kind of all like one after another just so I can hear people's voices and remind myself what they sound like. Anyway, um... I reviewed Rolo's voice, unplugged my microphone because it's in my headphone jack, and just totally messed up. So, didn't plug it back in. Apologies. You will probably not hear any difference, but I definitely did. I noticed it, and I'm glad I caught it now and not later. So, very sorry about that. So, pretty sweet security, right? It was imaginative. I'll give you that. Luca, are you sure we can trust the new recruit? I'll vouch for her. Thanks, I guess. Okay, Luca, you promised to fill me in about the Valentine warehouse. Um... Luca sucked in a long breath. So, like I said, there was someone there. What were they doing? I don't know, but the place was lit up and active. Maybe they were squatters? I don't think so. It seemed more organized. When the man pulled me in, I saw some sort of equipment running. A man pulled you in? Yeah, but I got away. You keep saying it was a man. They were wearing a mask, right? Yeah. Then it could have been a woman. How did you get away? I grabbed a rock or something and I broke their mask. They let go and I ran. Dang. That's intense. No wonder you freaked out when you saw your grandma. Yeah, that's the other part. On our way here, Beck and I saw Ernest Valentine meeting with Grant, wearing the same sort of hazmat suit. Rollo let out a low whistle. Hopefully that works. And they weren't there for idle chit-chat. It was a proper clam- 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 Looking up more words to learn pronunciation. Clandestine. 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 Kept secret or done separately, especially because- Okay, done in secret. Okay. It was a proper clandestine meetup. So, let me get this straight. There's an operation in full swing at the Valentine Warehouse? You were almost abducted by a strange man or woman in a protective suit? A protective <laughs> A protective suit? <laughs> He's southern, but he ain't that southern. <laughs> he knows the right word. Oh, man. Oh, this is fun. I'm having fun. Hope you guys are, too. <laughs> You were almost abducted by a strange man or woman in a protective suit. And then you saw your gran in the same suit talking to Harness Valentine? Pretty much. I'm beginning to think this town is kind of awesome. Rollo and Luca shot back a look. No offense. And so we can logically conclude... Aliens, or alien zombies, have infiltrated the town. And their leader is your grand, and she tried to murder you? First of all, and for the last time, there are no aliens. Lies, Luca. Lies. Don't believe the lies that the government and Luca tells you. <laughs> They're out there. They're out there. No, I... I 
let's just put it this way. I believe that there is life out there. I do not think it's like here with us like all the time. I just the the universe is so unfathomably large to think that we're the only creatures of higher intelligence or of 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 consciousness basically, like of being able to know that we exist and think about life and philosophy, you know, basically study philosophy and understand like the way we think and psychology is things like that. That is the sign of intelligent life. And so for us to be the only creatures in the universe, which we've only begin to just explore the outermost reaches of our own universe, we we still haven't even begun to explore the outermost reaches of our own universe. How are we going to say we're the only ones? So I that's that's just how I think. But I also don't think that they're just like here all the time, watching us, waiting for us. Like you know, like you know, oh well, we just have to find them. It's like if we needed to find them, we would. <laughs> I don't know. I also believe in uh, the scientific method, which is repeatable researchable recreatable evidence you know if i if if something happens that's interesting we should study it but if we can't if it doesn't happen again if we can't recreate the results how do we how do we test it properly that's all sorry about that sorry to go on that little side tangent second it couldn't have been my gran at the warehouse i broke that person's mask to get away the mask gran was wearing wasn't damaged but she's definitely hiding something. Maybe. Your gran is weird, but she might be the most boring person in the universe. All she does is sit around all day making jam. What could she possibly have to hide? I don't know. We haven't talked much since she moved in. Moved in? Your gran isn't from here? No, she came a few months back to take care of me after... After his mom went missing. Did you know your gran before? Not really, no. It's been years since I'd seen her. Luca, don't take this the wrong way. But are we sure your gran is on the up and up? Luca gazed out the window. I'm just saying. It sounds like strange stuff has been happening since she showed up. We could say the same thing about your family. But you're right. Luca, your gran is hiding something. And Pa always says, folks only bury stuff worth digging up. We need to investigate your house. If my gran really is hiding something... Don't you think I would have noticed by now? That's kind of the whole point of hiding something. I guess you're right. Gran has been leaving the house for hours at a time this week. I'll call you two tomorrow when the coast is clear. And we can start getting to the bottom of this. I'm always game for a good snoop. You can count me in. Chapter 6. Secret Lair. Ooh, a perfect place to conclude the episode. Thank you all so much for joining us. I think this one's going to be a little bit longer. I mean, I'm trying to get to like good stopping points with these later episodes, but oh my god. Oh my god. So much coming to light. So much coming to, to, to like what's going on with Gran and the suit and everything else. And we know that about the source, but what does that even mean? So much to figure out, so much to unpack, and so much more story to share with all of you. Thank you all so much for joining me. As always, thank you, take it easy, and peace. <laughs>